Tonight's the ceremony that you're experiencing for the White Sanctuary. Additionally, for the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you refrain from going off to the grassy areas and remain in your respective seating area and taking photos during the ceremony. At the conclusion of the ceremony, we may proceed on to the parade grounds after the pledge of dismiss. Please be cautious when ascending and descending the bleachers. Use hand tools where available, like walking, tripping, slippery, and flying hazards. Finally, restroom facilities are located in the buildings on either side of the platform. During this morning's ceremony, smoking and consumption of alcohol and beverages are not permitted. At this time, yeah. please silence all cell phones and yeah. other electronic devices. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. Good morning. I am Technical Sergeant Jeremiah Salyers, military training instructor, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. Today's basic military training graduation is a celebration of the achievements of these graduates. It is also a ceremony that both teaches and appreciates our military heritage. Drill is an integral part of military history, a prominence that rests on the fact that its fundamental purpose was to prepare troops for battle. For the most part, drill procedures practiced in the past were identical to the tactical maneuvers employed in the battlefield. It was this aspect of drill which made it such an important part of training. Even today, drill remains a necessary and useful training activity for instilling discipline in a street of war. Over 240 years ago, General Washington enlisted the assistance of Baron von Steuben and the distinguished Russian <laughs> officer to help instill discipline. Baron von Steuben arrived at Valley Forge in February of 1778, accepting an army of several thousand undisciplined, half starved, wretched men and women. To correct these conditions, he immediately set to work and wrote the regulations designed to teach the discipline of drill to a model company of 120 selected men. Discipline became a part of the military for these individuals as they learned to respond to commands without hesitation. As they mastered the art of drill and began to work as a team, this group developed a collective sense of pride in themselves and their unit. Watching this model company perform, observers were amazed to see how quickly and efficiently the troops could be massed and maneuvered into different battle formations. Later, members of this model company were assigned to the regular army to use drill. It was through this simple emphasis on drill that the effectiveness and efficiency of Washington's army and the army were improved. In 1789, Baron von Schleusen wrote the American Army's first field manual, the regulations for, for the order and discipline of the troops of the United States. The drill procedures placed into effect at Valley Forge remained unchanged for over 85 years, and many of these same procedures are still used today. One form of drill is a salute. Since early times, men at arms have used some form of a salute as an exchange of grief. The most popular which is in the chancellor. The exchange has been preserved and its use continued in all modern militaries, which inherit their traditions from the age of children. Throughout the day's ceremony, you will see the fights presented armed with one form of the military salute. The civilian counterpart of the salute is manifested in various ways, such as placing the right hand over the heart when the national hand is displayed, or raising the hand when greeting a friend. The military salute is given in the same manner as a gesture of recognition and a friendly greeting to a comrade. To maintain the proper decorum and respect for events such as these, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you're here. First, there will be times that you will be asked to stand for the invitation, the playing of the national anthem, the playing of the airport song, the reciting of the oath of the listening, and the airman's creed. Second, we ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to our flag during the national anthem and as it passes during the review. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at the pension and bow or salute. Civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem and after the flags have passed, you may return your hand to your side. As flights pass and review, a pause is appropriate, but Please, limit that applause so that others may hear the narration of the names and hometowns of the military training instructor. Please reserve the strictest respect during our oath and listening, during the oath, service members pledge their lives to support and defend the Constitution and our country. At this time, we'd like to take a moment to inform you of the specific flight locations on the parade field as viewed from the bleachers from your left to your right. Flight 
Please remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Evan. graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The commander of Air Force Basic Military Training, Colonel Billy Wilson, Jr. <laughs> the senior enlisted leader of Air Force Basic Military Training, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Anderson. Salute to our graduate airmen is an MC 130J Commando 2, call sign Stock 30. This aircraft is being flown by Major Matthew Rosie, First Lieutenant Ira Kiebring, and First Lieutenant Alan Hall. The load master for this aircraft is 2004 graduate of basic military training, Master Sergeant Joshua. <laughs> Master Sergeant Tessa Fontaine, accompanied by her husband, Michael. <laughs> From the graduating squadron, the commander, 320th Train Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Myers. <laughs> the 
Acting Senior Enlisted Leader, 320th Training Squadron, Master Sergeant Anthony Coleman, Jr. Also in attendance with us today, the Commandant, Inter-American Defense College Major General Richard Eichkamp, accompanied by his wife, Shannon. The Deputy Commander, 37th Training Wing, Colonel John O'Dell III. The Deputy Commander, Special Warfare Training Wing, Colonel Trey Irick. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Our Commander of Airmen is Technical Sergeant Robert Gaither. Colonel Nathan Colongo will review today's ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Seven and a half weeks, the men and women before you have transformed from civilians into motivated, disciplined warriors with a foundation to serve in the most powerful military the world has ever known. Once they leave basic military training, they will continue on to technical training to learn the skills needed for performing one of 118 specialties. They will then move on to serve at one of 84 installations around the globe or work directly with our sister services. As they move on to technical training, they will continue to focus on adapting to military requirements, achieving occupational proficiency, and learning how to be highly productive members of the armed forces. These men and women will prepare for increased responsibility and must ensure they are trained, qualified, and ready to deploy and operate in an expeditionary environment. Thirty-seven train trip. 
United States Air Force, Joint Base San Antonio Blackland, Texas. Subject, Commander's Excellence. The Commander's Excellence streamer is awarded to Flight 503 for their significant accomplishment demonstrating teamwork and points in the Supreme Court during the period of 11, 17, 17 July 2022 to 49 August 2023. Signed, Billy Wilson Jr., Colonel of the United States Air Force.
like to direct your attention to our national, state, and territorial flags. As these flags pass in review, please stand and bring with the appropriate courtesies for our national flag. As a reminder, military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. We ask that our civilian guests stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may either rather render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. Once the flag is passed, please be courteous to others and be seated in order to allow our guests the opportunity to view the flights as they pass in review.
Horsehead! Hush! Eddie!
Instructor, 